Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Um, today we're going to be talking about a little common, quite a common problem that comes up, uh, and that is when we're using a panner, uh, and we want to vary that panner in real time. So, well, first I'll show you uh, what I mean, and what, what doesn't work, uh, and how we can fix that. So here we have just a very simple plane uh, with a simple panning material on it. So, I've just got a speed in my panner, and I'm plugging in time multiplied by a speed, and that gives me control over the speed. I can slow it right down or make it stop. I can set it quite fast, I can set it really fast and I've got full control to that. Um, and that works fine, that's a, a very common setup that we use. Um, but this variable, this speed variable, uh, is set once here when we compile the material uh, and it doesn't change over, over the lifetime of our of our plane of our material um, and if it does we start to see some errors so I'll just set that down to I don't know, 0.3 for now um, so I've got this same plane in a blueprint um, here in the construction script I'm just creating a dynamic material for that um, so that I can edit it at runtime and then here I'm just going to create a quick timeline um, let's see speed variation I'm going to set this to auto play and loop and just create a quick float trap. Quick float track speed. Uh, a couple of points. So time zero, value of zero, time five, a value of one. And then here, I'm just going to take that plain material uh, variable that I saved earlier and set scalar parameter. It's called speed and I'm going to set it directly from my timeline. Um, don't worry, if you don't uh, know blueprints, um, hopefully this isn't too complex, um, but there's definitely a load of introduction to blueprints things, um, but hopefully even if you can't follow along with the blueprints, you can see what's happening and understand the, the concept behind it. So, so if I compile this now and click play, or simulate, uh, it goes really slow and then speeds up. That kind of makes sense, um, but this should be slowing down and then speeding up again, shouldn't it? That's what we set it to do, speed 0, speed 1. And it's kind of not, it's kind of just getting faster and faster. Um, so there's definitely a problem here, this isn't doing what I would expect, what I want to do. Um, and I can show you why. So the problem we have here is this time. So time's always going up. And if we think about it, our, our variable here, this is going from 0 to 1, 0 to 1, time is always going up so I'll see if I can and show you with a little preview what so what we're actually doing here with our time and our, our panel we're moving our UVs through the UV grid um, so after one second if our speed is one this square would have moved across and would have had one tiling well that makes sense um, but as that time goes on two seconds three seconds and each time our multiplier is being reset from 0 to 1. So we're always resetting back to here. So we're always resetting the offset to nothing. But as time gets faster, how much we're doing that offset by is getting more and more every frame. So effectively, we're kind of like we're seeing these UVs scrolling through this space. Um, and if you leave it get running, it'll get faster and faster and faster. And if we actually just try put this value from 1 to 0. So now just refer reversed that multiplier and we compile and play this you see the first loop is fine and then it starts going backwards and it's going to carry on going backwards and carry on going faster and faster as it's going backwards um, so really not what we wanted at all what we wanted with this was it starting with moving fast that way to the left of my screen um, and then slowing down but actually you can see here it's started going backwards and getting faster and faster so there's a really a problem with how this has been set up so um, what we need to do rather than using the inbuilt time multiplied by a speed is we're going to create our own artificial time and drive that in the blueprint so here scalar parameter, a scalar parameter artificial time I think I've spelled that correctly and we're just going to plug that into our time node directly and you'll see everything stops moving that's fine Everything stops moving, you stop moving as well. Um, and if I scrub this time value, it's going to start scrubbing through. And you can see we're getting that, that, that movement that we want. But now we need to control this value from our blueprint. So 
rather than using this, I'm not going to use the blueprint, uh, use the timeline, I'm going to use an event tick. It's got a tick. Uh, and what this will do is this will fire every frame. Um, and within that, it's also giving us this delta seconds. So this is how long has passed between ticks since the last frame. Um, so obviously with frame rate, some areas are going to have high frame rate. There's not much going on in the scene. Suddenly there's loads of explosions and dynamic lights and frame rate drops. So we need to know how long is between each frame. Um, and all we're going to do, see I've got my artificial time variable here. Um, and we're going to just take my every second or every every tick we're going to add to the artificial time how long has passed so effectively we're just recreating time here um, so if we take artificial time and we add data seconds and just set that back to be our our parameter so all this is going to do is give us the same time that this was but we're going to be able to control this ourselves in a minute so um, just going to set the value in the material artificial time and if I compile oh, there's a problem, why is that? I haven't got my plain material referenced so it doesn't know which material to set that on there we are, if I press play now this should just move as we first had it So um, artificial time value is going up and it's going up by one second every second that makes sense. Uh, that's recreated this value. But what we now can do is this delta seconds, we can multiply that by our speed parameter. So um, rather than setting it directly on the material, I'm going to set the speed. And now every frame, this speed value, this was our, our kind of our multiplier. This is how fast things are moving. And we're going to multiply the difference between or the time between our two ticks by this speed value. So if it took, I don't know, let's say we've got a really bad frame rate, it took a whole second to draw that frame, rather than adding the whole second to time, we're only going to add a percentage of that, so half of it or whatever. And now, if I've done this correctly, if I press play, it's going to start quickly, slow down over five seconds, and then start going, going quickly again. And that's controlled by this time curve here and you can see because we've artificially made our own time parameter rather than using any of the inbuilt ones we're able to control that to think about it with my UVs here we're quickly doing this and then we're slowing down and then we're quickly doing this and slowing down and we're quickly doing this and slowing down so what we're controlling here is the rate of movement which is actually what we want not the absolute movement which is what this setup was doing here um, Hope that makes sense. Uh, as always, any questions, comments, etc., let me know. Um, yeah, kind of thing that does come up quite often. Um, hopefully that explains it. Um, yeah, going to have a couple of weeks off for Christmas, um, but I will be back next year with some more videos. So if you do have any time over the festive period to do some work and stuff comes up, let me know, um, and I'll try and jump on some questions again next year. So um, have a good holidays, and yeah, I'll see you all next year.